The track mat key effect can be kind of a confusing concept, so I'm going to devote this entire lesson to just explaining what it is. And then in the next lesson, I'll give you a couple of examples. So let's go to Working Files, open up Projects, and go on down to 1502, Explaining Track Mat Key. I want to start off by revisiting the adjustment layer. And that's because the adjustment layer has taken on some of the roles of the track mat key. With the track mat key, you could highlight someone's face like this and maybe follow motion as we did over here. But what you can't do with the adjustment layer is that you can't, let's say, change the background and have the foreground be distinctly different. It just doesn't work. So for example, let's say I wanted to have the background be mosaic and the foreground be sharp. So I'm going to go over here, apply mosaic to the background down here. Go down here to type in Mosaic MOS and add the Mosaic effect to the background now. And now what do I do about the foreground? I'm going to turn off Mosaic and Gaussian Blur for the foreground, but nothing happens. That's because the background has been changed distinctly. And you can't, let's say, undo that by putting an adjustment layer on top of it. Not going to happen. We're over here with the Dressage Rider, for example. We got her going around there, and we have kind of a soft edge to this circle. Let's say I wanted to make it even softer. I wanted to go in farther with the soft edge, make it more of a gradient. Well, I could go back to the titler, and the typical routine I would do with the track mat key is I'd turn off this shadow, and I'd go back to fill, and I'd have the fill type be a radial gradient. You see the radial gradient looks there? And I'd have the black area here be somewhat transparent. I could drop it down to, let's say, 60% or something. And then it's a softer edge to it. I could pull it in to make it even softer, so it even drops off faster like that. And now I'd go back and you'd see it look softer, but now it looks even harder because we took away the drop shadow. So now it's this hard edge thing. So we weren't able to adjust it using the titler. One more thing, let's say I wanted to have an entirely different background. Let's say I wanted to have her riding on the clouds or something like that. Well, if I had an adjustment layer up here and whatever effects I applied to the adjustment layer it would be applied to the cloud layer as well. I want to be able to limit it to just this one layer here. To do all the things I just mentioned, where you want to have two distinctly different effects on two different layers, or you want to have a nicer looking gradient to this little highlight, or you want to use an entirely different background. For that, you use a track mat key effect. So you go over here and let me explain what a track mat key is, and then we'll do some examples in the next lesson. Let's go back to the project panel. I'm going to start by just walking you through this whole process here. I've got a couple of solid layers, I've got a red solid. Put it there. I'll spread it out so you get some real estate here, and pull it down so you've got some room on top. Here's this red solid. It's just this solid object that I made. It's actually made by using something called a color mat, but since it's called a color mat, it gets confusing when you use a track mat key. So this is this red solid. I'm going to put a blue solid on top of it. So as you can imagine, the blue solid will cover up the red one. There's the blue on top. I turn off the visibility, and there's the red guy. So what I want to do now is make parts of the blue solid area transparent to show the red solid underneath that. Other parts I'm going to make opaque so you can still see the blue solid. And some other parts I'm going to make partially transparent. So to do that, I'm going to use a graphic that I created for that purpose. And then I'm going to attach that to a track mat key that I'm going to apply to this layer here. So the graphic is over here. Pull it over. I made this graphic inside the titler. Let's take a look at it for a second. We've got these solid ovals. Solid white, black, and a gradient there. White, black, and gradient text. These are all solid. And then this little rectangle here has a solid white, but it gradually goes to transparent. So you see the blue below there. I put that on top of the blue solid. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach that to the blue solid clip. This is where the track mat key gets confusing. Most people think that when you use a track mat key, you apply it to the graphic that you're going to use. That's not the case. You apply it to the clip to which you want to attach the graphic. So I'm going to apply the track mat key effect to this blue solid so I can have parts of it be transparent and parts of it be opaque and part be partially transparent. So to do that, I'm going to go over to Effects, and you can find the track mat key inside the keying effects. You go Video Effects, Keying, and the track mat key will be down here toward the bottom. I've also got it in my group of color correction effects, because I use it so often, I've got it here as well. I'm going to apply it to the blue solid by just double-clicking on it there. Now it's applied to the blue solid. Nothing happens, because you need to tell the track mat key where to find the graphic that you want to use as a track mat. So I go over here to the track mat key effect. It says mat none. It wants to know what track it's on. The only choice right now is video three. If I were to take this and put it to video four, for example, now it's going to say the choice is three or four. Okay, very good. So I'm going to tell it four. Notice what's happened. We see the red clip down below it, and we see parts of the blue clip on top. What we're saying here is that we're applying this graphic to this clip. So any place in that graphic up on track four that's solid will make that same area in the blue clip opaque. 
Any place that's transparent, you see the red clip below it. So here it's a little transparent, but it gradually becomes solid. Here it's solid, but just a little bit of transparency around the edges. Otherwise, it's just solid, so you see the blue. I can reverse this. Click the Reverse button. If I reverse it, just think what's going to happen now. If I reverse it, any transparent area in this graphic will now become opaque, and any opaque area will become transparent. Boom. So the areas that are now transparent used to be opaque on the graphic. If I turn this off for a second, be reminded. Here's the original graphic, solid, solid, with a little bit of transparency around the edges. Transparent here, solid, solid, solid. Even though it's a gradient, it's still solid. I turn that back on again by turning on the track map key. You see that the solid areas have now become transparent because I reversed it. We have two choices in terms of the composite using. The default way is to use matte alpha. It looks for an alpha channel, looks for transparencies. But you can also composite using luma, meaning how bright is this thing. Let's go back and take a look at it again, kind of predict what's going to happen. So here it's bright white. And the default behavior of the matte luma mode is that white areas are opaque, meaning that you're going to see the blue clip. Where things are black, it's going to be transparent. So you're going to see down to the red clip. And where things are gray, it's kind of a combination of both. You'll see some red and some blue. And areas that are transparent in the graphic are also going to be transparent. You're going to see down to the red layer there as well. So again, in the matte luma mode, white is opaque, black is transparent, gray is kind of a combination of the two, and transparent is also transparent. So let's just take a look at that. Now I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to switch over to the matte luma. And the white areas are opaque. They are showing the top layer, the blue layer. The black layers are just flat out transparent. You don't see them. So a little bit of black over here that's transparent. Otherwise, it's white in the middle. And this is the black area, this gradient. This is the right-hand side is the white area. The whole black text and the black oval are gone. And this transparent area here inside that rectangle, it too is transparent now, letting you see the red area underneath it. I can reverse that, same thing. Areas that are white are now transparent, showing the layer below. Areas that are black are now opaque, and areas that were transparent to begin with are now opaque. That's the reverse. Another thing you can do with a track mat, of course, you can put it in motion. So if I go up here and click on this track mat, click on motion, for example, and move it around, let's see what happens. I'm not moving this layer down here. I'm moving this track mat saying, let's move that text around. So I can put that text in motion, and that's how it's going to work down below. If I want to change the size of the track mat, of the graphic, I can do that as well. If I want to put effects on it, I can do that as well. Let me go over here and get a blur. I'll get a blur and sharpen, get a Gaussian blur. We're putting it on the graphic, not on the clip that we put the track mat key on. So I've now applied it to this track. Now I want to make it blurred. Let's see what happens. There you go. So you can blur the graphic itself. If I turn off the track mat key here, you'll be able to see that we blurred the graphic. There it is. And that blur is showing up now that we've applied the track mat key. We've taken that graphic and stuck it on that blue solid to use as what's called a track mat. So that gives you the fundamentals about how a track mat key works. In the next lesson, we're going to use track mat keys in two instances. One is a static track mat, another one is what's called a traveling mat that's going to follow motion.